I'm just going to say this without any preamble. Go see Mad Max. It's one of the best American action films in a long time. And if you're opposed to seeing it for some sort of men's rights reasons, well then frankly I'm proud of you for finding this video. Because you're an idiot. Oh, Mad Max is a reboot by the way, so let's talk about those. You see, Hollywood looks at reboots and remakes the same way that Fox News describes people on welfare. If the money's already there, then why put in any effort? And that's why we get things like... What kind of animal could have done such a thing? You're risking your life. Darkness comes for you. Now, admittedly, The Wolfman has a mixed to negative critical reception. But when a movie is supposed to release in 2008 and gets pushed back two years, something's not right. Lo and behold, prodigal son returns. Hello, father. The movie has big names attached to it. Anthony Hopkins, Benicio Del Toro... The problem is, it's just not scary. If you can have a movie starring Hannibal Lecter and Che Guevara and not make it scary, you screwed up. I don't even know if Danzig would get behind this werewolf movie. Officer Jacques Clouseau, gendarme, third class. Ah! Ooh. So the Wolfman had some great actors in some kinda lame roles. The Pink Panther stars a comedian known for wearing a stupid fake arrow through his head, taking up a role once played by the great Peter Sellers. Listen guys, Peter Sellers played three amazing roles in Doctor Strangelove, he was supposed to play four, and each one has a very strong, very convincing accent. Meanwhile, this is what happens when Steve Martin tries to sound French. Set her to her. And while the original movie had some pretty good sight gags... Darling! Yeah. Look, I think I put something in my right eye. Let me put no, I mean the left. No, no, this one. You I don't come in the light, darling. But, darling, but it hurts. The Steve Martin remake has old ladies getting hit by police lights. Steve Martin. <laughs> Comedy gold. What do you get when you add Inspector Gadget, a Simpsons voice actor, and a legendary Japanese lizard? Unfortunately, the answer isn't a fire-breathing Chief Wiggum with a helicopter for a head. It's Godzilla 98. <laughs> it's kind of tough to list all the atrocities this movie committed, so I'll have to settle for telling you that it received Razzie nominations for Worst Director, Worst Screenplay, and Worst Movie. And it won for Worst Remake. Godzilla looks like the Xenomorph's prom date, and the addition of the little baby Zillas is just ridiculous. Godzilla and the United States just don't make for a good pairing, and neither do Jimmy Page and P. Diddy. Seriously, I've never seen a weirder combination of two mus- oh. Right. Where am I? Did you ever see that SNL sketch where Mark Wahlberg talked to animals? Not so crazy after all. I could talk about how Tim Burton totally got the tone wrong, or how awkward it was when Marky Mark made out with a lady monkey, but the most offensive part of this movie is also the most original. You know the twist I'm talking about. For the Abraham Lincoln monkey to exist, Abraham Lincoln if you will, then so much more has to be explained. The apes have to have a history nearly identical to Earth's. I mean, what were you thinking, Tim Tim? I'm not even going to touch the fact that you weirdly associated slavery with monkeys. That's your burden to bear. Or carry on your back like a mama gorilla. Hey Jean-Claude, what do we say when Tim Burton wants to remake a classic film? No. Correct. Now take us out. See you next time. Cut.